Wow, that's a lot of kinetic energy, right? Which one is it, Sam? It's both. Yeah, and so this, basically this is a mousetrap. It basically stores potential energy by pushing the spring back. And then once the lever is released, it releases all that potential energy and turns into mechanical or potential or kinetic energy. Yeah, there we go. So a lot of you have probably seen these. This is a mousetrap powered car. This is actually the one I had left over from a uh, uh, college class. It actually goes really, really, really far. It basically has a gear reduction system and all that. Blah, everyone's seen these and that's not very amazing. What are you doing? Get out of here, Steve. <laughs> so we are going to make something that I've never seen before. A mousetrap powered airplane. But Peter. What? Ah! Ah! Aren't mousetraps uh -huh, very, dangerous? Very funny. It's only dangerous if you stick your finger where it doesn't belong. Anyways, uh, I don't know how we're gonna do this, so I think we're just gonna tinker and document what, what, what has happened or what is happening. Okay, so I know I didn't really quite document this, but this is what I've got done so far. I basically copied what I do with my mousetrap car, which is basically, I say basically a lot, don't I? I take this lever basically arm. Basically you do. I, shut up. I, I take this like lever arm. <laughs> shut up, Steven. I put this lever arm over here, wind it around this axle. Now I see a lot of people do mousetrap cars like this, where they make this the axle, it goes to the drive wheel. So you, you get a, a very low ratio of um, in, induction or reduction. Wait, this is gear induction. What do you call it when you're not doing reduction? Because we're not reducing the amount of turns, we're increasing the amount of turns. This is a do before. The outer wheels make one revolution around the axle. But anyways, I copy that gearbox here. I put this on here, and this is what I get. So I'm gonna try to find it, find it a rubber and power plan on this. Look at that. It goes pretty good. This is pretty slow. I'm not really sure if this is gonna mean anything or produce any meaningful thrust. But ow. <laughs> what have you got done so far? I'm almost done with my plane. Where's the mousetrap? So let's see. I, I don't see a mousetrap. This is a lie. Mousetrap powered airplane. Oh, actually, give me that. I got an idea. No, it's mine. Woo. You just hit my airplane. Hey. All right, I'm gonna attach this here, and we're just gonna try this. I'm pretty sure this isn't gonna work, but all right, you ready? Let's do it. This is a great success so far. I, this is gonna be all hard, and I, I think it's, this is gonna be too. Uh, uh, it's broken.
Okay, I think I'm ready to wait, test it. Wait, 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 hang on. There's a middle of a montage. Oh, how did you, where'd you get that done? I got my tail done this morning. I got my nose away. That was fast. Oh god, this one's getting, this, that's really big compared to that size of that airframe. Yeah, it's super heavy too. Oh, oh look at this oh, place! Oh, 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 look at Okay, this might actually work. I thought this might be too heavy because I didn't do any lightning yet, but like it kind of glides. Uh, it's gonna be really. This is gonna be. Whoa. Yeah, this just reaffirms how much of a challenge this is gonna be trying to make something super light. Okay, back to the. Uh... Stop the music. All right, well, check it out. You, this is so bad. This is just so bad. That awful. rear spar is cracking me up. <laughs> All right, struck, let's see how spar. this works. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, my God. All right, check it out. Putting this back on. I added a rudder to it now. So now, let's see how it actually just glides. Get out of the way, Steven. Nope. That so was pretty, agile. that was pretty good though. All right, well, I think I'm just gonna wind this up and see what it does. I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna bend this and start over after this go, but let's just pull this off here. We're gonna wind this up to wind it. And we're wound. And what's your prediction, Sam? I think it will fall slower than before. <laughs> okay, let's see what it does. It's flying, look at it go! <laughs> yeah, it still fell slowly though. I mean, yeah, it's not gaining altitude. Um, that was still pretty good. It's good, but not good enough. Better than I thought. All right, um... He's a good boy. You wanna try to put this on yours and see if it does any better? Oh yeah, steal your motor. Yeah, well, I'll just, let's just try this, because we have two days to, to actually get a working mousetrap airplane. Sam, your turn to send it. I don't even know if it's trimmed. Uh, just throw it. Oh, fuck. Uh, mine was better, yay. Okay, Sam, you got an audience. Yeah, this will be better. Go, go, go. Oh, <laughs> your wings broke, bruh. I told you you should have beefed up that wing structure with some carbon fiber. Ta-da, we're done, check it out. Oh, Look at this, a lot bigger. it's way more bigger. The Fragile Flyer Mark II. All right, what'd you do, Sam? Give me the camera. Well, Let's see what you've done here, boy. I finished my motor. Uh, I put some carbon up here. This is just kind of stuck in for some testing. That looks pretty, pretty ghetto. Did so that just break? Oh my God. Ah, you broke. Oh no, uh, oops. Working. Wait, I think your propeller's turning the wrong way too. You gotta turn it the opposite way. I know. You dummy. Alright, just gotta throw it. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Your plane broke even more. See, I'm smarter. I, I wind my mousetrap away from my aircraft so I don't destroy it. Alright, go over there. Alright, the air is nice and calm. Oh! It's losing ah. altitude. It's too nose heavy. Let's try that again. I'm gonna just bend this so it has a little more up elevator to the airframe. Oh, that's clever, putting a uh, rod in there you can bend. Where'd you see that? <laughs> I stole this, I shamelessly stole this from your, your airplane. Hey, I'm an engineer. I steal the good working parts. Let's just see how it glides first. Oh, well, that's actually not bad. That's better. Oh, 
<laughs> too much gearing. Okay, um, I'm allergic to this BS. I can either drop weight, which I have nothing to simply cut out of this airframe, or increase the um, amount of torque and less revolution so we can gain all the... I think I'm gonna go that route. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some tape and tape around this axle so I get a stronger torque force, but less revolutions. So you always, you're always trading something for something. There's no free lunch here. All right, now you can see I got the tape on it. We're just gonna wind this bad boy up. It's almost double the diameter. And you can see I'm getting a lot less turns in here. So we're gonna have less of a duration, but more of a sprint. It's, it's gonna be a better, stronger sprinter now, basically. Okay, let's try the uh, better reduction. <laughs> oh. Ah, that's amazing. That flew. Nah, nah, this, this isn't good enough. I, it's, got more, it's got more in here somewhere. Cause I mean, look, that's a lie. I think we can do better than that. Uh, okay, I think, uh, judge, looking at this and looking at yours, I think I got a better idea. So I really wanted to try this, you know, mega oh. durate. Oh. No, that's fine. Mega duration thing. But the problem is I have to carry the way the spur gear, the extra set of bearings, and this uh, pinion gear, which, which is honestly is a lot of weight for something this small. And I'm turning this prop at a pretty high RPM, relatively speaking, for, for such an aircraft. So I think I want to go with maximum, uh, maximum diameter. So what I'm going to do is copy your thing and rebuild this gearbox. So I just turn just one, one shaft. One shaft, I maybe turn this faster, but the thing is I'm going to make a bigger prop so it, then it, it, it slows down. All you'd have to do is take that out and put a stick on that, and you're set up. Uh. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so that is oh. higher. It just pretty much maintained a level flight up until it ran out of energy, then it's, then it's gonna go into the dive. I think there's still more improvement to be made here, mainly because if you look at those, these props, I pitched them with the water warping technique, and there's just a little bit too much. I think this this right here is just more of like just blocking air, and it's not really shoving that much. So I'm going to increase the diameter again of this propeller, put less pitch in it though. So let's try that out. I need to find a better way to cheat. I mean, a different way to make my. Uh huh. Plane. You better get moving. We got one day to finish these projects. <laughs> Check it out, Sam, we made it. All right, yeah. you ready to try this thing out? Let's see who's is better. Way better at gliding. Okay, you ready, Sam? Let's do it. I'm pretty sure yours glided better because it's... Oh. Oh. Uh, Oops. I think yours is broke. All right, Sam, go. Okay, this yeah. should be better. Fly straight. What do you think, Sam? That's pretty cool. I mean, it is diverging a little bit from the mousetrap powered plane, but hey, all right, back on subject. <laughs> okay, back on uh, schedule or back on track, whatever. All right, time for the last world record breaking flight. We're also back at home. I just found out the secret to the rubber band part. Well, whatever, I'm just gonna throw it. Oh! <laughs> I think the plane hit the fan. Uh. There's still part of it on there. Well, what have we learned today? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay, 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 recap of the events. So we went to the indoor flying, it was a lot of fun uh, for just 30 minutes. Uh, we flew the airplanes, we did a, a dry one with mine first, so it glided to about 22 feet, and then we measured it there, and then we just wound up the rubber motor and we threw it again, and this time it went to a whole total of 36 feet. So that's not bad, it did 36, 22, what is that? 12, 14. 
14, yeah, yeah, you're bad with math. Okay, so it's 14, 14 feet, so that wasn't bad. You threw yours, however, yours glided further than mine to a total of like 24, 26, something like, like 27, that. 27, I think. 27, yeah. It's irrelevant though, because once you wound your motor, your plane went less of a distance. Yeah, I so, had too much yeah. flex in the wings. Yeah, so that's pretty awful. And then I also did the RC thing, so that was pretty neat. We did that as well. But overall, the experience with the mousetrap plane, this isn't really good B-roll. I'm done with that one. All right, let's get the good one out here. Um, yes, this is what actually ended up happening. So the reason why I redid my design is because I looked and did a little more research and also stole from your design aspects and looked at the F1D style airplanes. Now, for those of you who don't know, F1D is like this really, really competitive, super lightweight airplane building that uses rubber bands, typically not mousetraps. But uh, on another note, that stuff is really fragile. And I haven't really tried that, but it's really interesting. But uh, I have a feeling the mousetrap would probably destroy you in those airframes. They're also a lot smaller. So that's why I went. I basically just blew up one of those things, made it super sized. And this is what I ended up coming with. Now, the reason for the giant size is I wanted to keep the speed low because, you know, the faster you go, the more exponential drag becomes because you've seen these things, they go real fast, but they run out of energy real quick. So the mousetrap, I wanted to use the energy over longer duration of time. That's why we have these, this giant propeller. Because if you look at things that are efficient and slow and last a long time, they usually turn bigger wheels, bigger propellers, like cruise ships and all that. So that's what ultimately led to the giant propeller. So that's what I did. Oh, we should talk about the mousetrap. That, that was just awful. So the reason why the mousetrap didn't work well, um, actually, Sam, do you have an explanation for that? Um, Mr. Scientist. Well, we are only using about a half turn of the spring. Oh, yeah, that is true. Yeah, because if you notice that, like, this spring has a lot of turns inside the coil, and we only use half of that revolution. Like, if this is optimized, I would turn that spring multiple times over, but the problem is now we have to run a gearbox, and that, that gets away from the traditional mousetrap snap like this. So we have a lot of yeah. wasted And even then, when it's like at the bottom, that's a lot of, it's, it's still putting, pushing my finger pretty hard, so it still has a lot of potential energy to go around multiple revolutions. So that's why this is generally just awful for this, and that's why things such as the rubber band works a lot better, because this is, what is this? this what would you say this does? It more efficiently uses the potential energy you put back into it? Is that yeah, more, it? it uses its stored energy more efficiently. Yeah. And it's also a lot lighter because it's a rubber band and it doesn't have all that metal and all that stuff to do it. So typically what we get, what we turn in, we mostly get almost all the energy back out. Not 100%, but probably closer to 90, 80%, I think, of the revolutions you get. So you turn this and then you throw it. So, a lot of you probably seen these. These are pretty amazing little free flight toys. Oh, it's in the fan. Okay, this is in the fan. I lost sight of it. <laughs> but anyways, that was a lot of fun. Uh, do you have any other creative input to add, Sam? I just know my plane was way better. Uh, you're, oh, whoops. It had an RC car on Your it. plane is worse. Hmm, this is kind of interesting RC car. Maybe that'll be in the next video. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I don't really know what else we're gonna do with the mousetrap powered airplane. Maybe uh, this will be a challenge for you guys in the audience, for all of you that are engineers. I would love to see if someone can beat this, because um, I think my record was 14 feet of mousetrap powered flight. I, I don't even know what the time was, but it was pretty bad. Uh, but anyways, if one of you guys wanted to try to do that, that'd be really interesting. And maybe we might try to rat trap powered or play in the future too. But that'll probably be just as awful, just on a larger scale. Anyways, that's all for now, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.